इट्स अबाउट कैंसर किसी को भी हो सकता है कैंसर एंड टुडे वी विल फाइंड आउट आंसर्स डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम डॉक्टर नंदिता शाह कि ये क्यों होता है हम इसको कैसे अवॉइड कर सकते हैं गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई एम सो हैप्पी टू बी हियर कैन यू ऑल हियर मी एंड यू नो एज शी सेड शरण वॉन्ट्स टू हेल्प पीपल प्रिवेंट एंड रिवर्स डिजीज रिवर्स मीन्स not what people are usually doing which is controlling you know you got diabetes you take some medicine you control we are talking about reversal which means going back to where you were normal blood reports and no symptoms either and you know we also might be the only or one of the few organizations that wants to go out of business we really hope that you all become your own best doctors so that we have no business left and we are waiting for that day okay so today we are talking about cancer and i'm just going to use my slides as a guide and you know if you want to get rid of cancer today cancer has become so common right and most of us we don't have cancer but we don't want to get it either right so we're going to talk about both of these things if you want to get rid of cancer or you want to avoid cancer what will you do sorry eat well okay if you want to get rid of any problem sorry gather the knowledge okay any other answer lifestyle any other answer not forget health you want to get rid of any problem in this world what do you have to do yes get to the root cause you have to understand the cause and that's why medicines never cure because the cause of any disease is not lack of medicines is it so if we want to get rid of cancer we have to understand what is the cause of cancer and you know i think that all of you know what the cause of cancer is right what are the causes of cancer stress very good what else acid acidosis very good what else immunity okay very good bad lifestyle what else a uh, photon layer but before ha uh, ozone layer okay what else not proper nutrition what else chemicals chemicals very good what else and that's why we're so grateful that this whole place is environmentally conscious right they're not getting plastic everything and throwing everything away and all that what else pesticides and chemicals and one thing we all forgot the microwaves right the emf so conveniently forgot right <laughs> okay so let's remember that so if we if we want to get rid of cancer we have to work at the level of cause now one of the main things that we talk about is nutrition but we are going to talk about all of them but let's just talk about nutrition how many of you here are already following sharan diet and lifestyle oh wow you all are too good and how many of you have at least heard of it somewhere fabulous fabulous so it's just one step away right heard of it now next step okay so uh, and how many of you have actually reversed diseases with sharan lifestyle oh isn't that fabulous okay and remember all of you can prevent and reverse diseases so then we have a lot to share today so you know what is sharan lifestyle there five point it's a five point plan as far as nutrition goes there are other things which we'll talk about but as far as nutrition goes there's a five point plan and we'll talk about that you know if you have a car that runs on petrol 
would you ever put diesel in that car no if you have a lion what will you feed it meat and if you have a cow what will you feed it grass would you ever right now when why do you feed a cow grass because the cow knows that it has to eat grass isn't it true if you put meat in front of the cow the cow will not eat and i went to africa and there was so much grass but the lion cubs were not trying to eat grass so everyone is born with instinct right lions are born with instincts cows are born with instincts are we any less so let's get in touch with our instincts Imagine if you were in on a farm or an orchard and you see fruits and vegetables what do you feel like doing plucking and eating can you see that this is our food now if you see a chicken walk by or a goat does your mouth water whose mouth will water if they see the chicken lion might not even see the chicken <laughs> too small but who whose mouth will water if they see the chicken maybe a dog or a fox right because a dog can pounce on the chicken tear it apart and eat it whole and raw skin bone flesh beak claws everything did you know that there are actually people who go around collecting all the waste of the chicken that humans don't eat to feed it to dogs dog can eat every part of the chicken right similarly a lion can eat every part of its prey now whose whose mouth will what if they see a goat or a cow maybe a lion right lion can pounce and tear it apart and eat in fact beef may not even be the food for a dog right because can a dog can most of the dogs we feed beef to kill that cow no so we have to eat what is suitable we have to feed our pets what is suitable to them etc etc but let's start with us now imagine if you see green fields of wheat and rice have you seen in the village does your mouth water whose mouth will water if they see those green fields cow so can you see why people have gluten intolerance because gluten is not our food now if we go on putting wrong food in our body it will be a little bit like putting diesel in that petrol car it will not run right so even though we have been told that we are omnivores and conditioned to eat meat or milk or whatever we are eating we have to start thinking is it really the right food for our species right so that's one the second thing is that every animal in nature eats whole and how many of them cook before eating right so we should eat the foods that we could eat whole and of course we should eat them whole and we should eat them raw as much as possible right and then finally the third important thing is that we are the only species that sprays poison on our food so that other animals don't eat it and then we eat it like how intelligent is that right so we have to start eating foods that are really good for us because nutrients are the spare parts for healing medicines never cure body always heals but the body can only heal with high quality nutrients so if you go on putting low quality food in your body how can it heal right and the body tries to let us know by producing one disease and then often in our ignorance we go to the doctor and the doctor gives us some medicine medicines can never cure why is the body producing disease it's our body speaking to us it's telling us hey watch out change wake up but then we go to the doctor take some medicine and forget about it it's like saying shut up to our body right 
and then body has to shout louder and one day after taking medicine for something else and something else it has to shout even louder with cancer right so we could have prevented it all this time and we can start preventing it right now correct now you know do you know what is cancer what happens when you have cancer cells keep multiplying indiscriminately our cells are supposed to multiply but they are there's a controlled multiplication you know only according to need but when they just keep on multiplying indiscriminately that becomes a cancer and that cancer can even spread and become secondary somewhere but cancer doesn't come from nowhere cancer comes when we provide perfect conditions for the cancer to come right so now let us talk about those things so we were talking about the five point plan and we said the first thing is that it the food should be plant based first of all and not any plant based but the plants which are attractive to us you know goats eat different things cows eat different things have you ever seen now we are so disconnected we often don't see these animals and i'm so lucky i live in a village i see these animals all the time so goats eat totally different things from what cows eat and every species has their niche and we should eat according to our niche only so when you go to a farm or an orchard and you see something and you feel like picking it it's it's the right food and if you go to a farm and you see beans you feel like picking them have you ever seen this you feel like picking and eating or if you see corn growing you feel like picking and even eating raw right so we should eat those things which are naturally attractive to us especially can be eaten in the raw form and if we have cancer we want the highest nutrition so we want to include the maximum raw food possible right so that's number 1 then there's two more points here vitamin b12 and vitamin d often doctors don't check these things and it's very very important has anyone here checked vitamin b12 and d and did you find how many of you found that there was something wrong with your levels sometimes oh my god right so those of you who haven't checked it's really important whatever diet you do because you saw that so many hands went up and all of them were not vegan right so whatever diet you do you must check your vitamin b12 and d and supplement as necessary and how to supplement is on our website under try vegan you can learn more about our website and what we do either at the end by putting your name on a data sheet or picking up one of our flyers and going to our website uh, we'll tell you more about that later so five point plan food should be plant based whole organic organic is so important and you know a lot of people say well how do you know that it's really organic why should i pay more and when we don't spend the time to find the organic and pay more for it we are paying a lot more for cancer has anyone figured out how much cancer costs these days in terms of both health and treatment and then just checking vitamin b12 and d and supplementing if necessary now these are five important steps and that goes into nutrition nutrition is very very important for cancer but then there are other things as well now before we get there usually how is how is cancer treated what do we do when someone gets cancer what do we think of doing go to the doctor and then chemotherapy and radiation and surgery and why do we do that because we are 
scared. We are scared. Cancer means cancelled in our mind, right? Abhi now kya karege? So we go to the doctor and before we go to the doctor, we should understand what is chemotherapy. Does anyone know what is chemotherapy? Uh, chemotherapy, no, chemotherapy is a chemical that is put into our body which can kill cancer cells and actually kill any fast growing cells. So it kills blood cells, they usually do a blood test afterwards. It kills hair cells because hair cells are fast growing. Sometimes it causes ulcers. It causes a whole host of symptoms. And it kills the can cancer cells. And chemotherapy can be really good because it gives us time because it kills the cancer cells. But it can be really bad because it's destroying our body. And so now we don't have the immune system to recover and only our body can heal. And so we have to think whether chemotherapy will be better or it would be better not to have. And this is something where thought should really go into. We shouldn't just go for chemotherapy. Why do we go in for chemotherapy? Because most doctors don't know any other way. They don't know about nutrition. They don't know that the body can heal. They haven't tried it with their patients. They have been taught medicine in a certain way and they really believe that that's the only way. And they believe that let's take, get this war on cancer, but the war is on our body too, right? So the second thing is a little better and that is radiotherapy. And radiation is x-rays. And everybody knows that x-rays cause cancer. So when we take high doses of x-rays, it's good because it burns. It actually burns the cancer cells. And it also causes burns in the tissues around. And therefore it can also cause effects, bad effects. But it can be good if it's going to kill quickly. And so here too we have to weigh the consequences. We shouldn't just go running for key, uh, radio, radiation. But it can be slightly better in some cases. Some cases need chemo, some cases need radiation. And finally there's surgery where you just take that part and take it out. But honestly you can't cut cancer out. Because if you cut out a tumor but still a few cells exist... They can multiply, but even more important, if still the cause of that cancer exists. Right? So if we don't change our lifestyle, what will we attract? Cancer again. And it has happened to me, you know, sometimes somebody comes and tells me, Oh, I have cancer. And I say, okay, I can help you. Would you like to do a consultation? And they say, no, 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 I'm going to go in for chemotherapy. And so I usually stay quiet because, you know, this is something everyone has to choose for themselves. But they come back to me after two years and this has happened to me so many times and they say, now I've got a recurrence. And I say, okay, come on, let's start getting better. And they say, no, but I'm going for chemotherapy again. And then I say, but you already know that chemotherapy doesn't work. And they say, but it worked for two years. Now, you know, this is because we are in a state of panic, isn't it? So, let us start working on all these things right now so that we never reach that state of panic. What do you think? Hmm? Okay. So, we have to really think, you know, cancer cells exist in our body all the time. Right now, all of us have cancer cells. But we have our good cells which keep the cancer cells at bay and kill the cancer cells or devour the cancer cells and get rid of them. Now, if we create conditions just perfect for the cancer cells, they are going to grow. And what are those conditions? Does anyone know? Acidic. Very good. Acidic. Cancer cells 
survive in acidic medium and that's why you know actually cancer is not really a disease it's a survival mechanism cancer cells survive in acidic medium and therefore if we create an acidic body we are inviting cancer cells and therefore we have to make sure our food is most alkaline and as nature would have it the most alkaline food is the best food for us does anyone know what is the most alkaline food fruits fruits raw fruits fruits and second most alkaline vegetables now just see we are automatically attracted to fruits and vegetables because our body is alkaline and if we eat these things we will never get cancer isn't that amazing how nature has put everything perfectly in pair and highest nutrients are in fruits and vegetables and you know the maximum nutrient is just under the skin so if you peel all your fruits and vegetables nutrients gone okay so that's one thing so acidosis what else co uh, invites cancer cells yeah sugar that's very good so there are certain foods which are very acidic and what are they one of them is sugar tea coffee dairy and all protein you know protein breaks down into amino acids it's acidic in our body so protein nowadays everyone goes to the trainer and then has whey proteins eggs cheese paneer have you seen this is like feeding yourself cancer okay so proteins break down into amino acids and they are acidic sugar tea coffee alcohol animal proteins all animal proteins uh i'm not 100% sure in some cases hmm? refined foods refined foods processed foods processed foods they actually add acidificant an acidifier why because even bacteria cannot grow in acid medium they have acid regulators right and these are really harmful now you know one thing i'll tell you about acid acid is addictive right protein is addictive cheese is addictive curds curds are addictive right chicken is addictive sugar is addictive tea and coffee are addictive drugs are addictive these are all acidic and that's why if you want to lose weight you can use this plan too because once you get the acidic foods out of the way all the addictive things are out of the way automatically you can't overeat and you get better okay so as what else what else causes cancer okay yes chemicals chemicals what are all the chemicals in our life one is of course on the food all the non organic food and the packaging and uh, you know processed foods and all that that's number one cosmetics there's another whole set of um chemicals because our skin can actually absorb so all the lotions and potions and cosmetics and shampoos and soaps and deodorants i'm even mentioning those deodorants and antiperspirants and perfumes and hair dyes and the whole works you know these also we need to think of and that's why you know here some of the stalls are even selling alternatives to all this and the best alternative is to keep your body so clean that you don't need them so you know toothpaste have you ever seen the ingredients on toothpaste if you ever saw there the ingredients you would never put it in your mouth so it's written somewhere where you cannot see it right 
so i did an experiment i stopped brushing my teeth now it's already 3 years or so and i stopped using soap for showers actually i even minimized my showers i thought that if i'm really clean inside because you know i look in my village at all the animals around and if the animals don't smell when they don't have a shower every day then why should i right so i said how can i be maximum clean from inside and then i don't need to have a shower every day or if i have a shower just with water or maybe just clean private parts little bit more you know with soap or something and minimize all the showering and shampooing and all these things gone out of the way and you know what it's given me a lot more time to meditate even though i don't meditate all the time <laughs> okay so but anyway uh so i've been doing this experiment on myself just to understand how everything works in nature you know so that's one and then there are the chemicals that we use household chemicals the air fresheners sometimes we even go to these five star hotels and they have automated air fresheners right and actually chemicals are hormone disruptors no wonder everyone gets pcod and thyroid and uh breast cancer and prostate cancer and so many other hormonal problems just because we are have these chemicals everywhere right and then we use air fresheners in our homes and these scented candles and then detergents and so i also took all this out of my house and i wash my clothes with arita in a little bag in the washing machine and so on and so forth and it's working for me at least you know uh so so that's the second and then the third kind of chemicals you know medicines are also chemicals actually as a doctor i see patients who have got sick because of their medicines in medical language there's even a term for it iatrogenic disease a disease caused by doctors or medicines right so medicines are chemicals medicines produce disease too and so it's really important to <coughs> minimize our number of medicines <coughs> and plastics i'm opening my bottle now and i'm thinking about plastics because now we use plastics everywhere right so that's another big thing and here in bombay whenever i come i see everyone putting their garbage in the plastic bag organic garbage so that when it goes out the cows and all the animals who don't have any food open these bags or eat it with the bag and you know milk in india has been tested and it's found to be full of pcbs breakdown of plastic because we are putting our garbage in these bags and then animals are eating it along with sanitary waste and lead batteries and whatever else we put in they can't differentiate they don't have any food and then we drink their milk we are getting chemicals again and actually all the animals in our food chain are given antibiotics 80% of the antibiotics produced in the world are fed to animals in our food chain and this comes back to us through the milk and the meat and these are chemicals and they affect us too right so it's like we are in such a whirlpool of chemicals everywhere and what can we do to get rid of all these things that we have got you know when i started cleaning up my body i was still smelling and it takes some time to get rid of all those smells you know because there are toxins inside of us and how can we get rid of these toxins by fiber and only plants have fiber but if we refine the plants if we make wheat into maida if we make rice into white rice if we do all those things then we don't have fiber these fiber hold hormones they hold fat they hold sugar that's why if a diabetic has fruit and green smoothies and bananas and you know my diabetic patients ask me how many mangoes can i have i say as many as you want and actually because fruit is the food that heals right 
So when you take all the bad food away, you can have all the good food as much as you want. You can have as many mangoes as you want and your blood sugar will come tumbling down as long as you don't eat the wrong foods. Actually, the worst foods for us are fat. You know, fat clogs the arteries, reduces oxygenation, invites cancer cells, makes the area acidic, invites cancer cells, blocks the arteries, invites blood pressure, stroke, heart disease, or less blood supply to the joints, joint pains, back pains, wherever the arteries are blocked, we get problems. And the whole problem is caused by fat. It's like, you know, your kitchen sink. If you start pouring oil down every day, even from your dishes, it happens, then one day it gets clogged. The same way all the pipes in our body get clogged, you know, with fat. And therefore, in fact, no animal in nature eats fat. They eat fat as whole. How many avocados can you eat? Whatever you like. Or coconut, no problem. There is no cholesterol in coconut or cashews. Only animals produce cholesterol. There is no cholesterol in plants. And all this extra cholesterol is also because of eating animals or their secretions, milk. Okay? Milk, paneer, cheese, all of that. Okay, so these are the things that we need to cut out of our body. Right? Another chemical I forgot to mention is that Teflon pan. Teflon is a chemical, you know. So we should minimize all these things. And of course, there's the pollutants outside which we can do less about. But at least we don't need to go and throw plastic out and it gets burnt and all that stuff. Okay. So these. And then what are the other things that cause cancer? You know, I forgot to mention one thing. When you heat animal products, they, cause, they form heterocyclic amines which are carcinogenic. So when you boil milk, when you heat meat, carcinogens. And then oil. When you heat oil the second time, and all refined oil has already been heated once. So when you heat it the second time, carcinogens. So we can, just by eating, learning how to eat healthy, we can reduce carcinogens to a great degree. And then, of course, we should definitely minimize the mobile phone. Right? Uh, this is not a mobile phone, but I'm just... Uh, so, because... And I see so many people, they're always on their mobile phone. Sometimes, and luckily you all are not doing it so much, but sometimes people sit in a talk also and they are doing WhatsApp. Right? So... All this comes back to us. And these are the things that we can clear out to actually be free of cancer. Okay, my time is running out and I don't want to run it out completely without, uh, without giving time for questions. So a few more things I do want to put in. I met someone while coming into this. Uh, Tripti. Do I see Tripti anywhere? No, Tripti here. No, was it Tripti? I met someone while I was coming here today and she said, hello, hello. And I was thinking, and then she said to me, I met you in Auroville two years ago and I came to you for cancer. And I said, how are you? Is that person here anywhere? Uh, no, okay. Not here now. Anyway. So she said, shall I come to your talk? I said, please come. You can share, but she's not here now. Anyway, so she said, I'm doing good, right? Just by making lifestyle changes, we can do good. And we have two people on our team. One is Jayshree Kanan. Jayshree is here. Ah, Jayshree is here. Look, look. Jayshree, put up your hand. One is Jayshree and one is Nisha. Where's Nisha? Nisha is not here, huh? Nisha is not. Nisha Koiri. And these two people have reversed their cancer. And Jayashree went through some disease process and then reversed. Nisha, on the other hand, went to the doctor 
and the doctor gave her 45 days to live if she didn't go through chemotherapy right away and she turned around and said i'm not going back to the doctor so she made lifestyle changes immediately and now it's more than 2 years and she's helping other people reverse cancers and there are many more people like this and i want to drop a few names because you can go to their website uh, one is chris car k r i s c a r r chris car another one is chris walk c h r i s w a r k and then the third one is dr lorraine day and dr lorraine day had uh, had uh, cancer she had a little lump on her breast the size of a marble and being a doctor she said i'm not going to do chemotherapy i'm not going to do radiation i'm not even going to go for surgery and all her doctor friends said why don't you take it out and she said the cause of my cancer is not too many breasts therefore i shall not remove my breast but as she progressed it got larger and larger and that marble became the size of a grapefruit and people asked her how do you measure your progress and she said i measure it by looking at my tumor that means i still have work to do and she became so very bad but through that illness she learned everything that is required to reverse cancer and she has a 10 point plan and that 10 point plan has an acronym new start a b new start a b n for nutrition e for exercise w for water our body is made of water we shouldn't forget to drink right water s for sunshine what we lack and what we are lucky to have today right t for temperance temperance means eating all those addictive things is lack of temperance hmm t then uh, t a a for fresh air r for rest at the right time what is the right time when your body wants that's the best answer because that is true you know when we are sick our body asks for rest and we can rest all day long you know right now i have an uncle who is very sick and my cousin says he's sleeping all the time but actually that will help right so rest but the real right, when we're normal rest at the right time means when it's dark so between 10 and for our body heals but we have to be asleep so it's no point staying awake till midnight 1 2 and then sleeping till 8 okay so 10 to 4 we must be asleep no matter what so dinner by 8 pm latest bed by 10 pm very important rest at the right time then t uh l huh no 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 huh no 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 ah oh, okay but one minute i have my rescue um a trust trust i didn't find it but i remember the trust in your body trust in god trust in your body that your body knows how to heal and then a b attitude of gratitude what nitya just taught us and b for benevolence benevolence whatever you learn teach it to somebody else okay so new start a b, a, b nutrition exercise water sunshine temperance that means no addictive things air rest at the right time trust in your body that it knows how to heal attitude of gratitude and benevolence and if we put all these things into place cancer can be reversed 
Now I'd like to open for questions. Five points. Sharon, five points. Who knows Sharon, five points? Yes. Okay, plant-based, whole food, organic, vitamin D3, vitamin B12, and vitamin D. Fabulous, right? Remember all these things. Take the causes of cancer out of the way. New start A, B. We are good to go. Now, if you'd like to learn a bit more about this, I'm doing a program that I very rarely do in Bombay. It's a modification of peas versus pills. And it's called 10 Steps to a Life Without Medicine, which you will be taught to do each step carefully so that you can actually be free of medicines for life. And that's on the 9th in Bombay. And if you want to know more about that, Rena, can you tell them? Rena, just put your hand up. Remember, Jayashree is there. And you can speak to her about her, her experience afterwards. Okay? And, you know, she, I, we forgot to mention one thing which Jayashree teaches. And that is how to handle stress which Nitya just did for us. You know, resentment and stress cause cancer. Resentment especially. And that's why it's so important to forgive everyone for everything. Right? So, Jayashree teaches a lot of that work as well. Okay. So, I have only two minutes left. Anybody has questions? You're going to have to shout them. How do you supplement your calcium? Without That's now Rupa's book, but I'll tell you in short since you've asked me. How do you supplement calcium? Where does the cow get the calcium from? Right? So we don't need any supplement for calcium. And that's why Sharon's five-point plan works wonders because we don't have to worry about calcium. We don't have to worry about protein. We don't have to worry about anything. We just have to trust in God like the animals. Yes. Excuse me. One sec. Sorry. Huh? Okay. I can't hear. Dr. Michael Gregor says green tea is not bad. You know what? Green tea has been to said to be good because it has antioxidants. But all fruits and vegetables have plenty of antioxidants. However, green tea is addictive. It is acidic. It grows in acid soil. And therefore, we as Sharon never recommend green tea. Now, you know, there will be little differences between Michael Greger and us. These are 2%. You follow any one doctor, you will get that result. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, same thing about green tea. Ah. So, green tea, green coffee and black coffee said to be very antioxidant. So, is it okay to have three cups each a day? So, I just finished answering that yeah. question yeah. and the answer is no. Okay. Yes. Uh, one more question. Yeah. Uh, regarding, uh, you had mentioned about the alkaline fruits. So, lemon has been spoken about a lot in connection with cancer. So Absolutely. Lemon All uh, fruits, thank you for that question. All fruits are alkaline. Lemon is a fruit. Even though it's sour to taste, it has lots of potassium. It's alkaline in our body. And you can have as much lemon as you wish. In fact, lemon has vitamin C. It raises immunity. Yes. Okay, but let's make it really quick because we're out of time. Ayurveda is an ancient Indian. I'm saying it loud for them. Medicine, yes. And the question, real quick, quick. Okay. And Ayurveda uses a lot of oil and... Sharan says no oil and Ayurveda uses ghee and Sharan says no ghee and Ayurveda may say milk and Sharan says no milk. Sharan is not a system. Sharan practices what all the animals on the planet practice and their health is better than ours. Whereas when we go, I'm a homeopath and I realize that no medicine cures.
right no system cures but nature is perfect and so i won't go into more details about ayurveda but just end it there yes no no our body doesn't require any acidic food and acidic foods automatically come in beans and everything else so if we have fruits and vegetables alkaline will be better yeah, yes no i did not say vegetarians don't have to worry about cholesterol veget veget okay vegetarians and non vegetarians get the same disease but vegans may have cholesterol high because of what they ate in the past remember one thing the day you turn vegan doesn't mean everything you'll never get you do you have to make up for all that what you did in the past right so it takes time body takes time to clean out all that stuff okay last question last question this what source of b12 do i recommend only methyl cobalamin and no more than 500 micrograms not that 1500 2000 micrograms no only 500 but please read more about it on our website under try vegan our website is sharan-india.org and try vegan okay so do we okay there we, you know if you yeah. go to the uh, the best part of the whole exhibition which is the uh, cafeteria area we have a little stall and you can ask questions there because all our facilitators are people who got better and they know the way so you can ask them questions there too um that's dr rupa shah please welcome her on stage with an applause she will be felicitating dr nandita shah with that beautiful bag all of you all must have got the bag when you all registered online if you haven't registered now and get it thank you very much dr nandita for this wonderful talk